The second component, persistent organic pollutants. What are persistent organic pollutants? They are chemicals that we're being exposed to from various sources, whether it's pesticides, insecticides, whether it's the fluorinated hydrocarbons, the toluenes, the benzenes. There's so many different types of chemicals that we're being exposed to constantly in our environment. And many of these, we're not even aware of how toxic they are. In fact, the number of chemicals that are being introduced into our society right now, there's over 100,000 chemicals that are being introduced into the global economy every year. There's one, I'm sorry? Yes, it's called POPs, Persistent Organic Pollutants, chemicals. Okay, we call them, the, the reason we address them as persistent organic pollutants is because once again in the body, it's very difficult to get them out. Okay, so they persist within our system. And these persistent organic pollutants, one new chemical is be, being developed every 19 seconds. All right? Now most of them will not see the light of day, but over 100,000 are introduced into the global economy on massive levels and, and mass scale. Now, here's what's really scary about this. Uh, in 2003, at the, World Health, at the World Health Organization conference in South Africa, this is very disturbing, they decided they were going to come up with this plan to get rid of all the uh, bad chemicals that people were being exposed to. And they, they, it was a universal type uh, decision they had probably uh, 120 different, 130 different countries there that were represented, and they were of the 180 different countries, and it was unanimous. They were going to all stamp out these certain chemicals that were called the dirty dozen. And this dirty dozen, um, has anybody seen the cancer DVD in this, in this, in the audience? Okay, so you've seen the graphic, and you guys have seen the graphic of that slide, okay. So they called this the dirty dozen. And the dirty dozen, the reason they call them the dirty dozen is because these chemicals were considered to be the absolute worst things that nobody should have in their, in their country, that nobody should be exposed to, because they had been attributed to, uh, correlated with many different types of chronic diseases. So it was universal. It wasn't something that people were questioning, is it bad, is it not bad? They already knew 100% for certain this is bad stuff. Now what's really disturbing about it is that the, the most recent one of those dirty dozen that had been introduced into the global economy was introduced in 1959. All of them, all the other ones, were, had been introduced into the global economy prior to 1959. So they were like 1940s, 1930s, 1920s. So these things had been in our environment, being used in industry, and we were being exposed to for over 55 years before they decided that these were the dirty dozen and they're dangerous and nobody should be using them. They had been used for over 55 years. The most recent one had been 55 years old. The, the older ones were like 70, 80 years old. So three, four, five generations of people were exposed. If you figure every 20 years is a new generation, you had, you had up to four generations of people being exposed to these substances before it was determined that they shouldn't be exposed to them. That's disturbing. And what is that, what is that doing to the human body? What is, what is the biological burden and what, are the, what is the sequela to the system? What is the actual damage that's being induced in our systems over that 70, 80 year period? And what is it doing to our children? And then the generation after generation, many of these things actually continue generation to generation. There's one of those things was uh, uh, DHT. There's, there's many different types of fertilizers that are being used today that were determined 40, 50 years ago to be bad, and, but they were still being used in certain countries, and now they're not being used, but when you look at women that have had children, the third generation of these women have exposure of this substance, and in fact, in the United States, some of these things may not have been used since the 70s, but you have children that are being born in the last 10, 15 years. When you do blood work, you actually see the levels of these same chemicals that haven't been used in our country for 30, 40 years. Where did they get them from? They got them from because their mother and their grandmothers were exposed to it. Remember, they're called persistent organic pollutants for a reason, because they persist in the system. So what is the effect on our system? Has anybody ever sat back and thought, why is cancer the leading cause of death now? 